Hello everyone, uh, my name is Stephen Rich. I am the database editor for investigations at the Washington Post, or also that guy with an ICAR tattoo. Uh, I want to talk about the FOIA that I have so far sent 1,033 times, and I will probably continue to send. Um, so you may be asking yourself, why do, would I do this to myself? <laughs> I guess I'm a glutton for punishment, um, but really what we wanted to do was take our, our database of fatal shootings by police and build it out to include information on the officers who were involved in these shootings. We wanted to know the basics like name, age, and race, but we also wanted to know whether they fired shots in a previous shooting, uh, whether they were wearing a body camera, and if that body camera was recording, and things like uh, their excessive force complaints. Um, so I filed requests on a rolling basis as these shootings happened, uh, which ended up being like two or three requests a day, or seven or eight on Mondays to cover for weekends. That's not <laughs> terrible. Um, but my first lesson was automate. I, I couldn't have done this if I had written out a thousand FOIAs. And so I wrote a script, it pulled from our database, it filled the information on the FOIAs, and it sent them off all in one process. That was fantastic, except lesson two. Most, a lot of police departments don't, re don't accept requests by email. Um, that's partially because a lot of these small departments don't even have websites. So you kind of have to get around that. One in five of my FOIAs were sent via fax. So find a fax machine. <laughs> Lesson number three, a lot of the agencies will say, hey, you, great, you submitted this FOIA, please send us back this form that we want you to fill out. Do not do it. The forms are very, very time consuming and no law that I can think of requires you to fill out those forms. They are required to accept the request in whatever form that you send it to them. Lesson number four, if you don't live in some states, you can't actually get their records. Arkansas, Tennessee, they can deny you on the basis that you are not a resident of that state. That's not to say that you shouldn't send it. A lot of departments from those states gave me information. But in the cases where you can't, you need to make friends. Find somebody who lives in Tennessee, find somebody who lives in Arkansas, get them to send it on your behalf. Lesson number five, know what they can deny you for and then ask for it anyway. Um, so usually this comes with like, with personal information. I don't need an officer's birth certificate, so don't deny me on the basis that you don't want to give me that. Um, but more, in, in this context, I asked them if, if they were going to deny me because an investigation which is ongoing, which they can do, I asked them to just hold the request until the investigation closes, and then, if there are things that they can't give me, cite those exemptions. And more often than not, it worked. They, there are still people holding onto my requests. I may get requests back in five years, but they're still holding on to them. Uh, lesson number six, you need to have something to track them. Uh, I, my, if, if you know me and you've seen my desk at work, it's awful. It's just a pile of paper everywhere. I'm not really sure what, what is under all of it. But um, we built the tracking system right into our police shootings database so it could feed into it and it would it reduce the amount of work that I had to do um, and I could track on a daily basis where things were going. So, lesson seven, you need to track everything every day or else you're going to fall behind. Uh, if, if, we, if I take a couple weeks of vacation, I'm screwed. I have hundreds of FOIA responses in my inbox and I'm never going to get caught up on that. So lesson eight is to check your mailbox. A lot of them aren't going to, if you send an email request, they're not necessarily going to respond to you in an email. These are the requests I got back on Wednesday before I left work. I really, like, I, it, it, it's kind of like a daily thing. And I really, like, sometimes I just don't know what I should do with that. Um, lesson nine, I don't expect the same response from different uh, departments. This is real. So the first department involved in a shooting gives me everything I asked for same day. Second department says, we had, no, we had officers there, they didn't fire shots, so they didn't give me anything because I didn't need anything. The third department gave, waited six months, told me I couldn't have it because the investigation was ongoing. Do not expect different departments to do it all the same. Uh, lesson 10 is ev everything you get back, read it, because it's, it's going to keep you sane. So there's good stuff in there for reporting, Sometimes it gives you good redactable information that's just funny, like uh, the Phoenix Police Department. Uh, this isn't going to come up, but they redact the hat size of their officers. <laughs> um, 
And sometimes you get really fascinating tidbits that just keep you staying through the process. So uh, one guy moonlights as a tax preparer. We also got his college transcripts. He failed all of the relevant courses. <laughs> Is, is basically, look, we, at the end of this process, when we get all this data together, um, we're going to make it available for everyone so that you can do whatever it is that you want to do with it.